does it bother you that it took Syracuse this long to kind of release their numbers to the public of, of how safe that you guys have been and, and kind of twofold? Did it bother you that Syracuse took that long? And has it bothered you that teams across your conference haven't released any numbers and you don't know, you know, how many have po tested positive there or not? Um, I wouldn't say it, it bothers me because I feel like they probably have a reason for uh, for doing so, and I'm not sure what that reason would be, but I don't think it, it really bothers me because I, I have faith that, um, you know, my school and other teams are doing things correctly, so that it didn't really bother me. How about ac across the league, you know, not seeing numbers and not knowing, you know, at the beginning we saw 30 out of 120 Clemson guys test positive, you know, and, and you know, kind of really haven't heard anything since. Um, no, I don't think that really hasn't bothered me. I mean, like at first when, like, when you hear the numbers, obviously it's kind of like, it's like crazy at first, but then I feel like, I feel like they're, they're doing things their own way. And I feel like they're going to make sure their guys are safe, you know? So I feel like I have to, the same trust I have in my team. I feel like I should also have that same trust. Thanks, Effie. You're welcome. Next, we'll go to Adam Hillman from the Daily Orange. Adam, go ahead. Hey, Ify, how's it going? Oh, what's up? Uh, so it seems like Andre has really developed into a leader for you guys. You know, he's part of the leadership council, you know, uh, considering that, you know, he might leave the NFL next year. You know, what does he do to help you guys out in the secondary? And, you know, how has he developed into a leader? Um, I think he's always been very vocal, and I think that, his like last two seasons kind of just like propelled him more, more into a leader because, you know, he has that influence and obviously younger guys are going to look up to like a good player. Um, and the secondary, I think, I mean, we're all friends. So it's like, I feel like we all have good communication with each other. So I feel like that just helps in general in the secondary. You know, how does he help the younger guys? You know, what particular ways does, what does he do? Um, I feel like, it's kind of, it's kind of like um, showing by example because there's not. I don't think there's many times he'll ever like ever mess up. I mean, mistakes happen, but I don't think there's really times I can remember him messing up on a call or anything. But just like, just like after you know, maybe the twos are up, then after the twos come out, he's telling them, "Oh, maybe on this you got on this play you gotta drop down here, da da da, things like that." Thank you. You're welcome. Next, we'll go to Matt Hosworth from CNY Central. Matt, go ahead. Hey, AP, how you doing? Hope everything's uh, going well. Um, I'd like to, um, like to ask you just uh, th this secondary and, and, you know, it seems like the defense kind of hanging its hat on, on this secondary this year. And I guess tell me, you know, I, the guys last few weeks have been saying this defense has been flying around. I mean, what have you seen out of this defense and what you guys can achieve uh, this season? Um, I feel like this season, the defense is like the way this defense is designed. I feel like it just it just allows us to play and like, you know, use our athleticism and like and put more athletes on the field. So I feel like dudes have been just playing more like faster, like more physical. And I feel like as defense as a whole, we've just been flying around and just like just playing, playing like carefree and not not really worried about messing up but if you mess up just do a full speed and then everything will work itself out just a quick follow-up uh you know obviously coach white's defense is a little new to you guys i mean what have been the the biggest challenges learning it so far and, and how do you like it so far um the biggest challenge I, I wouldn't say there's been a biggest challenge because we've had so long to to actually learn it now so it's like i wouldn't say there's really that big of a challenge maybe maybe like community some communication stuff but like if you think about it we started learning it in march and then we've had a, we had a couple of spring practices and then we had the whole quarantine zoom meetings learning it and and the whole summer learning it so i feel like i feel like guys guys pretty much know it now so yeah thanks You're welcome next we'll go to john kikis from the Associated Press. John, go ahead. Hi, Hi. thanks for doing this. Uh, are you aware of the gathering last night on campus? And if so, uh, your reaction to that? Has, has the team talked about it? 
Um, I did see, I did see like a video of that. No, the team hasn't talked about it, but I feel like that was something that was inevitable. And I was like, when you have a, a bunch of people coming back on campus, there's obviously going to be some people that don't follow the rules. So I, I mean, I like, I didn't expect it to happen this early, but I expect, I expected it to happen like sooner or later. There's a talk that it could shut down a campus. Would that affect you guys? Do you I'm know? Not sure. I'm not sure. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Dan Tortora. Dan, go ahead. Hey, Effie, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Um, just uh, interested to see what your what your brother Obi has been saying, kind of through this process on the professional level. If you've kind of picked his brain at all about uh, you know playing and some of the things that are going on with with Corona and maybe some things he's going through. If you've spoken with him about this, um, the only thing I've really spoken to him about is well, he's a free agent right now. So for the for the longest time during this whole this whole um, Corona thing, there was like kind of a stalemate and like they weren't bringing in free agents um for the workouts because of the, obviously the the virus concerns and he was just telling me about how it's really gonna it's not gonna be good for um for rookies because they're gonna miss a lot of uh like developmental stuff they have to do and um a lot of rookies you tell me a lot of, of rookies or undrafted guys are gonna get cut because they they brought the, the roster down from 90 to 80 so a lot of them are gonna get cut without even even playing yet so that's the only thing he was telling me about. But the main thing he was talking about was just like the stalemate and not and not um, and not uh, free agents not being able to work out. But they just opened that up like last week. And then as far as uh, your first opponent on Saturday, September twelfth, is supposed to be North Carolina. They just went through a twenty-four hour kind of surveillance period to shut everything down, all athletic activities due to some uh, coronavirus outbreak that's happened with the overall student body. What are the concerns of the team about that and, and knowing that another team in the ACC and your first opponent is obviously going through some issues on campus right now? Um, we, haven't really, we haven't really talked about that as a team. I feel like North Carolina, they probably did the best thing in that situation to kind of shut it down and do like surveillance. But as a, as a whole, we haven't really talked about that. Thanks, Effie. Stay safe. Thank you, you too. Thanks. Next up is Darius Joshua from News Channel 9. Darius, go ahead. How you doing, FB? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Uh, thanks for taking the time again. Uh, just kind of following up with, with that, your first game in the Dome is not till, you know later in September, but we all know the ability to have fans in there is, is unlikely or at the very least not near capacity at all. What do you think you would miss most about, about not having a, a packed Dome uh, for home games this season? Um, probably third downs, third downs on defense, you know how loud it gets. So that's, that's the biggest thing. I feel like overall, it's just going to be with no fans. It's just going to be weird. It's just going to feel like a, like, like a scrimmage almost, you know what I mean? Cause it's not, there's not going to be like, like momentum and things like that, that comes with the crowd. So it's definitely going to be like a, a different feeling. And kind of following up that on a separate note, uh, I'm not sure if you guys saw on Twitter last night, kind of the, the report right now for the eligibility vote potentially coming tomorrow is that potentially players could play throughout their entire season and not really use up a year of eligibility. You play as many games or as few games as any guys want. Do you think not having a kind of deadline or, or having a kind of the ability to a kind of open-ended aspect to that, do you think that would have a uh, an effect on, on some guys' decisions whether or not to play, see how it goes, that kind of thing? Do you think it would kind of have an effect? Um, yeah, I think that might factor in on uh, some guys' decisions, but it really just it really depends like what what their decision was for opting out. You know what I mean? Not 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 saying on my team, just in guys in general in the NCAA, because if they're if they're opting out because of COVID, I don't think that'll change. You know what I mean? If they had like real concerns and underlying issues, I don't think that rule will really change anything for those guys, but I think that it'll be good for the other guys that wanted to, you know, just retain eligibility. So I feel like that'll have more guys playing, I guess. Thanks, Evan. You're welcome. Next, we'll go to Ralph Russo from the AP. Ralph, go ahead. Thanks, Effie. Uh, listen, I'm actually uh, following up on the last question, the idea of the eligibility. I was thinking of a guy like you, you've already been there for three years. 
if this year doesn't count, conceivably you could be there for three more. Now, I don't, I don't know if that's really what, what you want to do, but mm-hmm. as, as you know that now you'll have this free year of eligibility, have you given much thought to what it means to somebody like you? No, I, I honestly, I really even have, I haven't because when I heard it, I thought, I thought guys in the locker room were joking about it. So I really haven't given it much consideration. I know like being at school, being at school for six years would be like a very long time, but if it's something I had to do, then I would, I would do it. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Next we'll go to Stephen Bailey from Syracuse.com. Go ahead, Stephen. Hey, Ify, hope you're doing well. I just kind of wanted to ask you what your decision-making process has been like kind of for the last few weeks. I mean, I know you guys kind of get new information every day, but did you have any concerns to start, be it eligibility-related or, or health concerns? And um, has that changed over the last few weeks? And, and where are you kind of at now? Um, my No, my thought process hasn't really changed this whole time. Um, I had no plans in opting out, and I don't. I don't think anything will really change that. So my, I've been like the same basically the whole time. Obviously, there's some concerns like, like guys want to play, but if it's not like you know done correctly, then people are going to be concerned. But I feel like they're moving in the right direction in terms of like the testing. Like the ACC came out with the testing three times. So yeah, I've been. I've basically been the same that I wasn't. I wasn't gonna. I had no plans of opting out. Um, and to follow up on the eligibility um, kind of questions, do you have a feel for how many guys within the Syracuse locker room that that, that might affect? How many guys are really, you know, we're, we're considering opting out based strictly on eligibility stuff as opposed to health concerns? No, nah, I, I really don't because, like I said yesterday, when I, when I found out, like from a couple guys, I really thought they were joking. So <laughs> I really, like, I really don't know, like, who or how many, like, it would potentially affect. No problem. I appreciate the time. Yeah. Next, we'll go to Mark Larson from Spectrum News. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, if you want to go back to that question about the gathering on campus last night, when you see video like that, and, and uh, you know, it could potentially – jeopardize you guys uh, in the bubble uh, with the students acting like that, what would your message to them be? My message to the students? Yeah. I mean, my message would just be, I'm pretty sure there's a rule, like if there's a gathering, like you get suspended or something. So I guess my message would just be like, remember that rule. Like if so, if you get caught, then, you know, that's that. And I mean, you know, if they continue, the campus could be shut down and, and nobody wants that. So would you tell them to just kind of be smart? Yeah, but I, w- I would, that's exactly what I would tell them, but I doubt they would listen, you know, people are gonna do what they wanna do, so. All right. yeah. Do you find yourself holding your breath um, every day when you wake up at what's gonna happen next? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but at the same time, I just want to, like, you know, take it one day at a time and focus on football, and then, you know, whatever happens, happens. Like, I don't really, like, wake up, like, oh, what if today gets canceled? You know, I'm just trying to focus on what I have to do in terms of football, and then whatever happens, it happens. Next, we'll go to Danny Emmerman from the Daily Orange. Go ahead, Danny. Uh, Mark just stole my question there, so we'll – uh. Going back to what you said earlier about playing in the dome, you know, without fans, um, can you tell me a little bit more about how you think um, fans affect your play? I know you mentioned third downs and momentum. Um, so what do you imagine that looking like? Uh, I feel like I feel like no fans would have, like, I feel like it would just have dudes more kind of, like, like focus you know what I mean because there's no outside effects and you can even you know you can even hear your coach on the sideline you know so if you mess up alignment whatever he could tell you things like that so I feel like it would just make dudes more like more locked in there would be less like like outside noise and emotion and you know what I mean so I think that's the effect it would have interesting thank you all right, Ify, we got time for one more question, and it'll be from Nate Mink at Syracuse.com. Nate, go ahead. I don't have, a, I don't have a, too much of a complicated question here, but yesterday we heard um, teammate Aaron Service um, indicate that it's his understanding the ACC is going to move to 
in-season testing three times a week. Just wondering if, if that was sort of expressly communicated to you guys by um, a formal a school official at this point. Um, a former school official. I know, uh, I know uh, Coach, Coach Babers told us and, you know, his staff told us and, and told us in a team meeting, but a, a former school official, uh, mm -hmm. I don't think so. I'm, not, I'm honestly, I'm not sure. I think I think that that covers it. Um, and just to just to be clear, that's that's in regarding with the entire conference, not just you guys at Syracuse. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Um, we're gonna go for 15 minutes, get through as many questions as we can during that time, and I'll unmute the uh, media member. They'll have the opportunity to ask you a question and one follow up. Okay. Sounds good. We're going to start first with Corey Spector from WAR. Go ahead, Corey. Hey, Kingsley. How are you? Good, good. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, I'm curious what you saw last night in the video from on campus and just what your overall reaction to it is. I mean, as a team, we wasn't, we we're not happy to see it. And um, we just hope that, like, the incoming freshmen could be, like, smart about the decisions they make and trying to keep themselves safe and keep the campus safe for everybody. How will you approach your interactions on campus this upcoming semester in regards to keeping not only you safe, but your team safe as well? Um, for the most part, we plan on taking as many online classes as we can to avoid interacting with people, not interacting with people, but being around too many people. But if I do go on campus, I stay safe, stay away from people, put a mask on, you know, the usual things to keep myself and people around me safe. Thanks, Casey. Next, we'll go to Matt Hosworth from CNY Central. Matt, Matt, go ahead. Hey, Kingsley. Ho hope you're doing well. Um, wanted to ask you, you know, obviously, I'm sure you learned quite a bit from uh, both Kendall and Alton last year. And, um, I mean, now that you're, you're one of the, you know, premier pass rushers on this team, you know, what, what, what do they teach you that, you know, you're able to kind of uh, bring into this season and, um, and, and, you know, just call, you know, follow in, in the footsteps that they led? Um, my three years here, I learned. I learned a lot from both of them. I learned. I learned. I learned a lot. Two different. Two. They both brought two different things to the table, and that was that was very beneficial for me to pick the brains from both of them. How to like study film, watch film, understand the people you're going against, understand pass sets, how to react, things like that after practice, working on after practice, little things, and even how to watch film. You know, things like that, all that adds up. And I was able to be blessed to learn a lot from both of them. And just a quick follow-up, how, how do you feel like this defense is, is you know, welcoming this, uh, you know, th this new scheme uh, that Coach White has been implementing? Oh, yeah, the guys love the defense. It gives us, uh, gives us an opportunity to run around and make plays. And, and we're accepting it. We, 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 we're looking forward to seeing how it plays out in film, you know. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we'll go to Mario from News Channel 9. Mario, go ahead. Thanks, Lee. Thanks for doing this again. Uh, I know you guys don't play in the Dome until a little bit, but what's that moment going to be like? I know you play games when you're a little with no fans or barely any fans, but you play college football in these huge stadiums. You're not going to have any fans. What's that going to be like? Um, that's definitely going to be weird at first because in the Dome you love, that's the main reason you play in the Dome, to see everybody yelling and that energy that the fan brings from – from the from the school and from the community but I guess <clears throat> if it comes down to that we just have to adjust to it and like focus in more on ourselves and like as a team and understand have a good communication with the sideline better communication we'll be able to hear each other better and I think those are some of the positives we can look forward to too. Since you stepped foot back on campus as a team back in June can you summarize what these last three months or so, uh, two months that have been for you guys as a team to try and put everything together with new coordinators to everything going on? Um, for new coordinators, we've been, we've adjusted well because we've had a long time with them and, and we, we're, we are, we're upset to what Coach Wyatt won from us and we understand how the defense is going to play out. And for the other things, like we're just trying to take it every day, one day at a time, one practice at a time. We can't, 
we can't look to the future and tell it what, what's going to happen. But we just got to be prepared, be prepared for whatever happens, you know. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Ralph Russo from the AP. Ralph, go ahead. Thanks for doing this, Kingsley. Um, so yesterday, the NCAA uh, basically gave, you, gave football players and all the athletes in the fall a freebie. You're not going to get charged with a, a, a year of eligibility. For a senior like you, I'm wondering if, you know, that gives you a certain peace of mind if this season does maybe get truncated or, you know, cut short by COVID reasons, nothing that, that you had your own doing, um, that maybe you could do another season. Have you, have you given much thought about what it means to you? Um, personally, I haven't had time to think about it and talk to my family about it. And um, <clears throat> I'm just looking to take things one slowly as one, one, one practice at a time, one game at a time, one season at a time, and, and see what happens after this season, and we can make that decision. Thanks, Kingsley. Next we'll go to Dan Tortora. Dan, go ahead. Hey, Kingsley, how are you? I'm good. How you doing? Doing well. Uh, you being a senior, obviously the, the importance of, of getting out there to, you know, not only be there with your brothers at Syracuse, but hopes of the NFL and whatnot. Just what you can say about being in the ACC and one of the conferences that made the decision to move forward and play as opposed to some of the other conferences. Um, as far as I'm concerned, we just we able to find a way to keep everybody safe. Remember, that's the most important thing. And if we can stay safe and play ball, that's like positive. So that's what I'm looking forward to. For this defense and what uh, Tony White's been implementing and whatnot, just what you can say about the three three five, your comfort level, and if we're going to see maybe some more versatility from you. Oh yeah, we have we have a lot we have a lot in store, and um, I'm we're as a whole defense, we're enjoying it and we're embracing this new this new concept and understanding the um, defense a different kind of way, and we're just looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to get out there and playing in different different positions and different spots on the field too. Thanks, Kingsley. Stay safe. Thank you. Next up is Adam Hillman from the Daily Orange. Adam, go ahead. Hey, Kingsley. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? So a lot of guys in the NFL, you know, you're seeing guys in the trenches, defense line, offensive line, that you know, they've been opting out because they're worried about the close proximity, you know, when you're lining up and, you know, you're getting blocked, blocking. So is opting out something you considered? And, you know, why, why do you feel so comfortable playing this uh, this year? Um, it wasn't something I considered. Um, I feel like um, – I feel like as Syracuse University, we're we're taking, we're, they've been taking care of us. Like they've given us um, the opportunity to be safe while we are here, and safer here than back home. So that didn't really come to my mind as an option to opt out. I didn't really think about that. Mm -hmm. And so you know, a few of the Big Ten guys. One of the reasons that the Big Ten decided to postpone the season, or what they're saying, is that um, guys have been coming down with a heart condition after they got COVID. You know, with my called myocarditis is like an inflammation of the heart. Something you're aware of and you know what what is your reaction to that? Um personally I feel like we should try to stay as safe as we can. And uh, nobody wants to get that. Nobody wants to be in that position. But if all the schools can do like their what has been asked of them and follow the rules and then we I hope we should all be good and we should all play in a safe environment. All right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Next, we'll go to Stephen Bailey from Syracuse.com. Stephen, go ahead. Kingsley, hope you're doing well. I, I kind of wanted to zoom out a little bit and ask you what, what you think this year kind of means for amateurism and, and the bigger picture of college sports. I know you were on the ACC's autonomy board earlier this year. Um, it would seem to me that, that football players playing during a pandemic might be a, another reason to, to ask for compensation and, and, and further things like that. Um, <laughs> I know there's a lot going on, but you know, have you spent any time thinking about that? And what do you kind of anticipate um, discussions maybe being like about those topics moving forward? You mean amateurism topics? Yeah, yeah. And the argument that players should be paid and, and, and how guys potentially playing during a pandemic while not, you know, while getting the uh, compensation or stipends that you have now as opposed to more. I mean, I feel like as student athletes that we ask for as much as, as we can get from, um, from, uh, from the NCAA and, um, and trying to keep our amateur status uh, in, in that, in that sense of it. But I can't really speak for everybody and um, say that we should all get um, this and all get that. 
but for the most part, the amateur, the, I'm trying to articulate this. Like, it's not something that I, I, I've thought about this, but it's not something I actually like think about. It's been a long time since we had this, this conversation. So it's not actively in my mind. And, um, I just feel like, I feel like the NCAA should do their best in like keeping everybody safe and like if and like rewarding um, rewarding players that they're willing to play in this season with like the eligibility rule about not having to lose a year of eligibility because you come back a year. I feel like that's the way of like rewarding the players for this year. Sure, I, I appreciate it. I know it's extremely nuanced and <laughs> with what your day-to-day -day life must be like right now. I, I, I know it's probably hard to zoom out and think that way. Um, but I, I, to, I guess to, as a second question, I did kind of want to ask you about um, the eligibility uh, recommendation. I know you were asked a little about earlier. You know, what do you think that means for Syracuse's team this year? I know guys have varying concerns. Someone who has a health-related concern, this probably won't affect them, but someone who is maybe worried about losing their senior year and, and on a truncated season, um, that kind of goes out the window. So do you, do you think this will lead to more guys on your team um, leaning toward giving this season a chance? Um, yeah, I can't, I can't really speak for, for, uh, for anyone right now, but anybody that has that leave for the reason you mentioned about the eligibility, I feel like this will give them a chance to come back and like, play without being scared of losing the extra year if they want to, because it's still that decision if they still want to play in this circumstances, you know? Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Kingsley. I really appreciate your time. No problem. Next, we'll go to Darius Joshua from News Channel 9. Darius, go ahead. How you doing, uh, Kingsley? I uh, wanted to say you have the same name as my brother, so it's uh, nice to meet another <laughs> Kingsley. Right it's not a lot of um, Kingsley out there. Yeah. Uh, what uh, What do you feel like you've learned maybe about yourself or about some of your teammates kind of going through this the last couple of months where obviously there was a pandemic to start and some of the racial unrest in, in the overall country. And now you're actually trying to play football with, with some of well, with all of that really kind of still going on. What do you feel like you learned about yourself? Um, about my teammates, we've, 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 we've been, we're closer than we've ever been. Like um, there's a lot of things going on in the outside world and the only place that we find certainty and solace is within ourselves and talking and, a lot of meetings, a lot of pods. We we started in smaller pods, hanging out with each other with mask on and all that, and we just we just glued. We just got close. We we were thinking alike, and the defense were thinking about the same things. Where we just the chemistry just get got better, and that's how we're we've been we've been getting better together so far. And then following up with that, kind of on a separate note, uh, obviously to have a season, every team in, in the conference has to kind of follow the same rules. Every opponent you play has yeah. to be following the same rules to keep guys safe. So how much do you guys sort of pay attention when, when other teams in the conference, opponents you have on the schedule, like UNC, they had to pause practices, Notre Dame doing the same. How much do you sort of pay attention to that as the season gets closer and once it actually kind of kicks off? How much do you sort of pay attention to those opponents and what's happening on their campuses? Um, we have faith that other campuses are doing what they can to keep their players safe. And if they're keeping their players safe, then then um, it'll be safe to, to possibly play them. But for the most part, we're taking our practice one day at a time. We're not worried about what everybody else is doing. And we just hope that they're keeping their players safe. And if they're not keeping their players safe, then who knows what could happen next. Thanks, Kingsley. Stay safe. Thank you. All right, Kingsley, we're out of time. Really appreciate you joining us this afternoon. Thank you for having me.